Mama's A. Mama! And this is the end. I is Diane and Diane comes out and helps with the llamas every once in a while and really likes them so oh. these llamas are a little bit different than the ones you see in the zoo they're a little more tolerant of your hands but llamas don't like hands coming at them okay this one this one's name is ricotta she was so white when she came out she looked like ricotta cheese and this is amazing grace we call her just grace is she giving you a kiss? Actually, she's just sniffing you, just to see what you smell like. Okay? Let's hope she doesn't want to graze on your hair. <laughs> Normally, you would be able to feel, now you can feel on her neck how soft she is, and she's that soft all over. Llamas were bred to be beasts of burden. Do you know what that means? No, they don't eat bread. Fast so they don't get killed within an hour of being born. Yes. Right it takes them a good hour to get on their feet. There's o I've only seen one born on the farm. I've had six born on the farm, and I was only here for one birth. And, and they're real wobbly when they get up, sort of like horses, but they're fast. Within about an hour and a half to two hours, they're out there running around with the rest of the herd. Because out in the wild, they would get killed. Because if they couldn't move, an animal, a mountain lion or something, would get them. I need to take you home. Come on, take now, llamas, I was talking a minute ago about llamas and being herd animals. They don't like to be alone. You, used to, you have to have llamas in at least pairs. You don't have to have a girl and a boy llama, but you should have two llamas. Okay? And at nighttime, it's really fun when it's cooler weather and it's, the sun's going down and there's still a little bit of light. It's like twilight. They sometimes get out in the pasture and they run around and they run around and they what we call prong and all four feet hit the ground at the same time. They kind of spring. And it's really, really fun to watch because they run in a line and in a circle. And once they start doing it, all the males start to do it too. Oh, here she comes. Do you see how fast they can get up? Doesn't take much, does it? They can ride, if, if you weigh under 100 pounds, you can ride a llama if they're trained to do that, if they're trained. But the front teeth are mainly to, to pick up grass and take leaves. They're not grazers. Do you know what they're called? Browsers. Because what they do is they graze a little bit here, but they browse a little bit in the trees, and they like a little leaves. Go ahead, Cush. Cush means uh, what they call the sternal recumbent position. Here she goes. She lays down on her tummy. No, they don't. That's their stubbornness, and if they don't want to get in that little pony trailer over there, this is what they do. <laughs> kush, K-U-S-H. Okay, so that's a kush. They don't, they don't like to stand all day long, so they take little rest breaks. They rest. This, do you know why they rest in this position? Do you? They can get up lickety split from this position their feet are bent behind them all they have to do is spring right up and they're ready to run from anything that's coming after them anything in the wild like a mountain lion or a bobcat or something yes they do it takes 344 days to have a, to, to grow a llama so they can only have one a year because how many days are in a year but um, Really, what we use are the old English sheep shears. Have to sharpen them a couple of times when we cut their wool. Um, it's, it's pretty easy to cut when it's not wet. I just cut a little piece off of her just to show you how sharp this, the shears are. 
I use these mainly because I can control them better. If I had hand shears and I cut or nicked them, then I wouldn't be able to sew them up and I'd have to have a vet out here because you can do that very easily with those very heavy sh um, shears, electric shears. So basically when I trim them, I trim along a line. I usually go from right up here at the, the tail, I come down around the belly, she's okay, and then I come down on the shoulder and I trim up near the neckline as well. When I come out at first to, sh to shear the llamas, what I do is I do this so they can see and they hear that noise. They're real curious about different noise. I don't want to scare them. Okay, so I make sure they understand. Coming to see about it. <laughs> she wants to see what's going on. It's not shearing time. I usually shear them uh, Memorial Day weekend. That's my shearing weekend. Um, that's usually because I have three days to do it and also because it's not as hot and humid and it's preparing them for the hot and humid weather. The other thing I have to do maintenance wise, I have to trim their toenails. Um, and I had hoped to show you how I do this, but I can't really today. <laughs> so I will show you what I use. They're pretty, very, very, very sharp. <clears throat> and I just use these small clippers, okay? Usually I have to make two or three clips on the toenails. They're kind of a V-shaped toenail. Um, so this is what we use. You've probably seen these. They almost look like garden shears, don't they? Or pruning shears. When they're a baby, a lot of times they lay like this for a while around their mother. Within the first hour of being born is crucial. Every 15 minutes I come out and I'll do things like snap this. You notice it doesn't bother her a bit when I do that. Okay. Take it on and off. I put a halter on her. I mean, she's not even an hour old. I put a baby halter on and off, on and off. Clip the clip, everything. I touch every part of her body, her toenails. I lift up her tail. I rub her belly. I go to her umbilical cord. I take and move her legs, and I move them until there's no tension in them so that she's just relaxed. Then I just leave her alone. I don't talk to her at all when I'm doing this. If I talk to her, she will bond with me instead of her mother, and that's dangerous. So I just go out and do my business, 15 minutes of working with her, and then go, go do something else, drink a cup of coffee, and come back out another 15 minutes to a half hour. I take paper bags and crunch them up in front of her, plastic bags, and just do all sorts of noises. Um, take the shears that Diane has in her hands, and I'll, I'll um, make that sound with them. I'll take these clippers and make that sound with them, and even put them down near her, her feet so that she tolerates all that I have to do with her even take a syringe and put it in her mouth so she knows when I go to worm her, it's not going to threaten her at all. So <clears throat> when she was born and I picked her up, I had to turn her and walk backwards and let her mother see the baby the whole time. I didn't, wasn't afraid the mother was going to hurt me at all, but I wanted the mother to trust me that when the baby was taken away, it wasn't going to be gone for good. The mothers do nurse them regularly. Uh, they hum a lot. The babies hum a lot, and the mother hums a lot when they're born, and I think that's their signal, here I am, you know, this is the one you're supposed to be with. Uh, if they try to nurse on another mother, that's a no-no, and the other mother will shoo them away, um, lickety-split. Not 200, llamas, now this llama's small right now, she's a year and a half, but her grandmother, this kind of grayish, brownish one right here that's close, close to us to the right, she could probably hold 100 pounds. She's big, big back, long back, can distribute the weight, but no more than 100. Usually it's more like 60 to 80 pounds. What, walking? Yep. They can go a good 20, 25 miles a day. There's 51 farms in North Carolina, and people show them. Uh, Virginia State Fair, actually the North Carolina State Fair, I believe they're trying to get a show started there. They have a fiber show. They, in fact, I think they just had it over in Western North Carolina. The llamas are used, when, the, when they show them, you can win big prize money. You have to be eight years old or older to be able to show a llama. And they have all sorts of different events. They have different, they have events where you can do the jumping event, where you just see how high your llama can jump over like a, a high jump pole. They have um, a flapjack uh, contest where you have to have a pack on your llama, carry everything in it to make a fire and make, uh, and have your frying pan and everything. and mix up your your batter for your pancakes and you have to carry the llama into the ring the llama has to lead within a certain distance you have to make your fire 
and make your flapjacks right there on the on the grill. So they do some fun things too. Then they have your basic shows, just leading the wool shows, wool classifications. She would be a medium wool. This is a heavy distribution wool. When you look at her, she doesn't have a lot of wool, but it's all over. It's on her head. She's got bangs. It's coming out her ears. It's on her legs, everywhere. And so when they talk about heavy distribution, they just mean where is it on the body? How much do they have on the body? What's covered? You notice she doesn't have much on her legs um, at all. The one that's not out here that does it the most frequently is Audrey. And if uh, Audrey Hepburn, if anybody gets near her food dish, her head comes up, her ears go back, and she gets ready to spit. In fact, she spit at Jasmine today, and it went in the fan, and the fan just spewed it outward. Um, basically, they don't want anybody messing with their food, and they know exactly which dish is theirs. Okay? Now, have you, has, has any of these llamas spit at you today? No. Okay, so you're, so you're not going to go home and tell everybody that llamas spit, are you? Yes. Okay, you're going to say, I saw llamas and not a single one of them spit. Okay. Oh. Now, have you looked at their mouth yet? What kind of teeth do you think they have? <laughs> really? Okay, sharp teeth. Okay, do you notice now do you notice that she's been chewing the whole time she's here? Yeah. She's chewing her cud like a, a cow does. They have three stomachs. Three stomachs. Okay. Well, she wanted to rest. Now if you look at her I'll let you see. You see that? She doesn't have upper teeth, does she? She's just got gums there. They have upper teeth in the back. But if you look here, this is just a this is just gums. Here. Look. Look. Okay. Now, males, I can't show you this, but males actually by the age 2 or 3 have fighting teeth. They are razor sharp. And right about here and down at the bottom in the same place these things are curved and they're like razor blades. Okay, you have to have them taken off. We saw them off with a, a piece of wire, sharp wire, and that will uh, keep them from harming any of the other llamas. But they use those out in the wild. That's how they protect themselves. Okay. <laughs> this was the first llama I ever had. This is, we call him Pelly. Oh, he ran out. And the rest of them are out here. We let them out in the pasture. This is kind of muddy out here. Okay, I don't I want you to stay close to the barn. Llama, a real poem. Llama, 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 llama. Llama, 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 llama. Llama, llama, llama. Llama? <laughs> llama, 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 llama. This imaginary story was written by Stephen Cosgrove. It is about two llamas named Pish and Posh. They lived high up in the mountains. They looked almost alike, but in their hearts they were very different. Now Pish was sweet and loving, while Posh was ill-natured and selfish. When you read Pish and Posh, you will know why Pish said all creatures 
have a purpose and each one is beautiful and rare. My name is Olivia McDonald. Do it again. My name is Olivia McDonald. I want to share with you some things that I learned from the Incas by Charlene Newman. They were a very smart group of Indians that lived way before Christopher Columbus discovered America. The Incas built incredible cities high up in the Andes Mountains. How did they build these cities so long ago? Be sure you read this book and learn what the llamas did to help the Incas. The name of this book is Llama Secret. It is a legend. Do you know what a legend is? Well, it's a story that your grandfather might have heard when he was a little boy. And later on, he told it to your father. Then your father told it to you. And someday, you might tell it to your children. Venting back to the llama, this llama could talk. Well, it was a good thing because he shared his secret and saved the former's family. Be sure to read the book. The Lama Secret and find out all the details. This is Seeming saying so long. Thanks for stopping by Thomas today. I hope you learned as much about Lamas as we did. Just remember, knowledge is power! Goodbye! Bye.